Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to our channel. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can exactly install and use Ubuntu into your Windows 10 or Windows 11 PC. And we're going to do this process via VirtualBox. So, without wasting your time, let's get started. So first of all we have to download the VirtualBox. So for that open up your Chrome browser and go to virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads. I'll put the link in the description below. From here just download the Windows version VirtualBox which is 6.1.38. After downloading it just go through the installation process. I have already installed it so I'm gonna cancel it. Now we have to download the Ubuntu ISO file. For that, go to ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop. Again, the link will be given in the description below. From here, download the Ubuntu 22.04.1 LTS version. And this is the latest version of Ubuntu. From here, you can see the system requirements and click on download to download it. Again, I have downloaded it, so I'm going to cancel it. Now that we have downloaded everything, let's open up our VirtualBox. If you open VirtualBox for the first time, it will look like this. In order to install Ubuntu virtually in your Windows 10 or Windows 11, we need to make a virtual machine here. For that, click on this new icon. And you can see this window. So there is actually two modes here. One is the guided mode, which is this one. And another is expert mode. So export mode is basically the expanded version of guided mode. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step. So I'm going to select the guided mode. From here, you have to give the name of your virtual machine. So I'm going to name it like Ubuntu 22.04.1 and LTS. After that, you have to set the machine folder. Again, the default is good here. And VirtualBox will automatically select the type and the version. The type will be Linux because Ubuntu is a Linux based software. After that, click on next. And here you have to give the memory size. So I would recommend you to go up to this green line, but in my case, some applications are going in the background. So I'm gonna give it like 4.5 or 4.7. After that, click on next. Here is the hard disk. Click on create a virtual hard disk now and click on create. Here the hard disk file type always choose the VDI which is virtual box disk image. Click on that and click on next. And here on the storage on physical hard disk, click on dynamically allocated. And if you don't know what is dynamically allocated means or fixed size means, then you can read it right from here. So select dynamically allocated and click on next. So here you have to give the file location and the size. I would recommend you not to mess with the file location. And in the file size, I would always suggest you to go up to like 50 or 40. If you have enough storage on your hard drive, then you can go up to like 80 or 90 gigabytes. After that, click on create. And our virtual machine is already created here, but we're not done yet. So select your virtual machine and click on settings. Here in the general setting, the basic settings are already given. So let's go to advanced. Here in the shared clipboard and drag and drop, both of them set it to bi-directional. After that, go to system. Here we have already given the memory size. So let's move to processors. So here in the processor, I would again suggest you to go up to this green line, which in my case, it's only two CPUs because my processor is i3 processor. But if you have an i9 or i5 or i7, then it can be different for you. But in my case, some applications are again going in the background. So I'm going to set it like one CPU. 
and here again move to motherboard. Here we have to change some boot orders. So if you have downloaded the ISO file on your pen drive and you want to install it right from your pen drive, then just select the optical and drag it on top of everything because otherwise the boot order will not work and it can't be installed properly. But in my case, I'm gonna install it right from my hard drive so it doesn't matter. After that, let's move to display. Here in the video memory, set it to maximum which is 120 megabytes, 128 megabytes and leave everything default here. After that, let's move to storage setting. Here in the controller ID, click on the empty and on the right side you can see a CD icon. So click on that and click on choose a disk file. Now you have to find your ISO file we have just downloaded which in my case is in the D file, in the D folder. So click on that and open. And apart from that, you can leave everything default here. So click on OK. Now your virtual machine is ready to install properly. So click on start. And it's gonna take some time to show us the interface of Ubuntu installation. So let's wait for it. So here choose the try or install Ubuntu and click on enter. And here you can close the options that are coming in on the top of virtual machine. And here is the installation window of Ubuntu. So on the left side you can choose your language which in my case is English and click on install Ubuntu. So here you have to select your keyboard layout. In my case I'm using English US keyboard layout. So I'm gonna select English US. And if you don't know which keyboard layout you're using, just type something in the box and click on detect keyboard layout. So after that it says please press one of the following keys, so keep following that. And keep answering the questions. So it's English US. So after that click on continue. So here always choose the normal installation. After that in the other option choose everything. I mean both of them. After that click on continue again. So here in the installation type choose erase disk and install Ubuntu. So don't worry it's not gonna erase your physical disk. It's gonna erase the disk we have just created virtually. So click on that and click on install now. and click on continue. Now here you have to select your location where are you from. So after choosing your location just click on continue. Here you have to give your name and your computer's name and a password here. So I'm gonna give my name here like you show you. And after that my computer's name I'm gonna remove the virtual box and the hyphen. Now give a strong password here so in my case I'm using a little bit short password for this tutorial and after that click on require my password to login and click on continue now it's a time consuming process and I'm gonna fast forward the video in real life I would suggest you to just grab a coffee or something else rather than just sitting in front of it waiting for 20 or 30 minutes
So now we have to restart it. So click on restart now. Here it says please remove the installation media and then press enter. So if you are installing it right from your pen drive, then I would suggest you to just remove it and then press enter. Now you have to log into your machine, I mean to your Ubuntu. So click on the account and give your password here. And you can skip this uh, option that are coming in. Click on next, next and next. And finally click on done. So here is your Ubuntu into Windows 10 or Windows 11. But there's one problem. If I maximize this machine window, this is not maximized. So to fix that, right click on the desktop and click on display setting. Here you have to set the resolution. So on the drop down menu, choose 1920 by 1080. And if you have this kind of pop up, a software updater, software updater, which says that you have to update your software. So you can just do it or just click on remind me later. So here on the display setting, click on 1920 by 1080. Click on that and click on apply. And click on keep changes. Here you can see it's already maximized. I'm going to maximize and uh, minimize it. But there is still a problem. You can see these bars on the top, on the bottom, and the right side. Well, to fix that, just on your keyboard, click on the right control and F. And click on switch. And you can see the bars are gone. And Ubuntu actually comes with many applications like Mozilla Firefox and the LibreOffice and many more. You can just check it out yourself. And if you want to minimize this window, I mean this virtual machine and again go back to Windows 10 or Windows 11, on your keyboard just press the right control and F again. So here are the minimize and the maximize button. If you want to minimize it, just click on minimize and if you want to maximize it, just click on maximize. And if you want to close this machine, just click on the X arrow and click on power of the machine. And this way you can use multiple OS into your Windows 10 or Windows 11 with the help of VirtualBox. So that's for today's video guys. So if you learn anything new from this video then make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also make sure to subscribe my channel and press the notification bell to get interesting videos like this. My name is Simon and I will see you in the next one.